Right everyone, it's time to get the programming done for this index. Let's do it. So let's go up to view and output, just so we've got an output ready for when we test the game later. And now let's go to start a GUI. Open up our index here. In fact, I'm going to rename this screen GUI. I'm going to give it another name. I'm going to call it index, U index GUI. And now we're going to open up our let's let's just you know what we're gonna add in a script into our index here let's add in our local script and this is gonna be a management so we'll just rename this to management and this is where we're gonna manage our index so what I want to happen is if they've got the marker the actual text so let me find it the text here so say they found the bouncy marker I want the, the background color of the text to turn green when they find it. So let's make that happen. So the first thing we want to do is make a button we can press to open and close this index. So let's add in a, um, a text button and we'll rename this to open. And we're going to drag this, well first I'm going to resize it, so I'm going to make it 0 0.20, 0 0.150. Okay that is not like a square I thought it would be. Um, and I'm going to maybe make this 100 by 100. So just resize it till it's your liking, like so, and I'm just going to place it there. And now I'm going to change this text to index, and I'm going to scale it up. And maybe play around with the colour a bit, not that colour, I want the actual background colour. In fact I'm going to pick a screen colour and pick this colour here, and then I'm going to change the text colour to white. Well I, uh, I might even give it a text stroke, why not? Yeah, why not? And now we're going to add in a UI corner into this button. Okay, now let's change this radius. I'm going to make it 0 0.10. Now let's go in our management script and we need to make a couple of variables. We need the close button and the open button. So local close equals script.parent.close and then local open equals script.parent.parent.open because the parent of this management script is the index. The parent of that is the index GUI. And that is where our button is. So now we've got our two buttons. We need to say, let's start with open. So open dot mouse button one click, colon connect. And then we're going to call a function. And in here, we are going to, well, we're going to make the index visible. And we've also got some other code to do a bit later. So, so to do this, we need to say script.parent.visible equals true, because we're opening it. The script.parent is the index.visible. Now let's do the same for close. So close.mouseButton one click, colon connect, and we're going to call a function. Script.parent.visible equals false. So now we've got an index button uh, and a close button working. And now we're going to create another function. So we're going to, uh, we can drop those down there. I'm going to make this here. So local function, and we're going to call this function um, manage markers is what I'm going to call it. And let's press enter. Now what we've done here is we've made a new function. This is how you remake a function, and that's what you've just done. We've made a new function. Now in here, for now, we're just going to print hi. So let's, under our open, so when we open it, we want to manage markers. Let's call manage markers. Now if we hide this index here and hit play, now this is why we've opened up the output earlier, you'll see if we hit this it opens and it prints high and we can close it and keep opening it, which is just what we want. Now we're going to get into the main actual, um, now we're going to check for these markers, that is where this high comes in. So in here we're going to check for markers, so check for markers, that is what we're doing here, so let's do it. So to do that, what we want to do is, first of all, create a for loop for each of our markers. So for i, comma, v in pairs, that is how we create a for loop. And what we want is, uh, we, we want to get all of these um, frames here, all of these image labels under the index. So to do that, we can say for i, v in pairs, script.parent which is the index colon get descendants that will get every single descendant so everything underneath the index 
if you do get children, it'll only get the desert grass rock sect. It'll only get stuff directly under index. But if we do get descendants, it will get everything that is under it. So then, and then we need to put the do at the end. Now the I is the index and the V is the actual object. So we want if V colon is A. And if we have a look, these are all image labels. So we want image label spelt exactly like that if you're not completely sure you can click on your image label and at the uh, under the uh, properties you will see it says image label at the top here so yeah if it's an image label then this is where we want to check if we have it or not so we say v dot name okay so now if it's an image label we want to check whether or not we have it now if you remember when we hit play under our players, we've got our, so under our player, we have a markers folder, which gives us a true or false value whether or not we've collected these markers. So let's go under our management and we need to make a kind of like a, well, we need to compare and make sure that these markers are how they should be. Okay, so now we need to check whether our item is in our player. We need to make sure it actually exists. So just so just to make sure that we're not going to get any errors. So what we want to do is say if well first of all let's create a local player. Local player equals game dot players dot local player. And we can do that because we're in a local script. That's how we access the player. We need to say if player dot markers colon find first child and then v dot name because um because V is our object, of course, so that will be an image label. But the name of it, we want to get the name, because obviously these are the exact same name as these markers. We want to get the name. So to do that, we just say V.name. Then, now what this line of code does is it checks if this marker is actually inside the player. Then, if player.markers colon find first child V.name. In fact, actually, I'm going to set that to a variable first. I'm going to say local marker equals player.markers, kind of find first child, v.name. And then we're going to say if marker.value is equal to true, then, so if we do have the marker, then we want to change the text of it. So we want to say v, because remember that is our image label. So say we've got the bouncy marker. V is our bouncy marker here. Dot text label because we have a text label under the marker. Dot te um, dot. What do we want? So we wanted to change the background color. So dot background color. And then as you can see over here, we've got a three on the end, so we just put three. Equals color three dot new, and this is our new color three. So over here we've got two five five two five five two five five. We want a green color, so get the green color you want. So let me go over here. I'm going to make this visible for a minute, just so we can see what we're doing. Uh, let's get this green color. So what green color do we want? I quite like that one. So I'm going to. So we've got. I'm just going to copy those numbers. Twelve, two, five, five, and zero is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to undo that and hide the index again. And I'm going to paste those numbers into here. Now it's going to tell me it is yellow. Uh, just so it's going by red, green, and blue. Just ignore that. Uh, it says it's yellow. It's not yellow. We might be able to click color here. So it's coming out as yellow for some reason. So let's change it in here. Oh, yeah, sorry. It's because color free returns a value between 0 and 1. So basically just click in here, and you can change the color to how you want it under here. Anyway, that's how I want it. So if it's true, then and do that. And... That should be it. I think that's everything. So I'm going to reset our data. So to do that, go into data store and I'm going to call this tutorial 2. This will give us new data. If we hit play, I'm confident this will work. Let's click index. All these markers are white. As you can see, I've not scaled them properly in the last video. That was my mistake. Now, let's go get this marker. Hit index and it's green. Lovely. We'll get one more just to make sure it definitely works. Uh, yeah, and it's green. Now we're going to 
press stop and press play again and they should still be green yep now there's going to be one problem and here is the problem we collect it it doesn't change until we open the index so we to fix this it's actually quite a simple fix what we need to do is go under our management script okay so the best way of fixing this is creating a while loop basically so while wait do and then we're going to call manage markers now you may be thinking why did we even make this why do we even call manage markers under the open if we're just going to call it every you know 0 0.03 seconds anyway and that's because we're not we're only going to call this every second or so we don't need to do this literally every by basically putting one in here it's waiting one second each time before it calls manage markers so it's a lot less demanding on your computer so if we now test this look we can go collect our bouncy marker look we can collect bouncy marker and it will update like that there we go and it, it's a lot less demanding that way and now as you can see we can jump up here and that's it we've collected our markers you can do this for as many markers as you want but for now this will do me so that's what i wanted to show you today okay and that everyone is our find the markers game that is it well done give yourself a pat on the back we have made our find the markers game and that's as much as it, there is to it so if there's anything more you want me to add let me know and i will might be able to extend the series further but as far as i'm aware now this is everything we need this is all the basics so thank you for watching everyone and i'll see you in the next video goodbye